Well, it, it is the typical end of the year uh, deal I've seen for my three years up here. It's going to increase spending with the uh, promise of uh, spending cuts sometime in the future. At the end of the day, it's going to increase the deficit. It's going to raise taxes and fees, and it's not going to address the long-term overspending problem in Washington, which is we need to reform entitlements. Congressman Holtzkamp from Kansas, a Republican in the same caucus. We're back with the panel in our center seat. Georgia Republican Congressman Tom Price, a conferee. You support the budget deal. I do. Why? Uh, we, we want to stick to principle. Uh, no tax increases, spending less in the 10-year budget window over the next 10 years than current law, and making certain that we set in place the numbers available so the appropriations committees can do their job for the next 18 months, which they haven't done in six years. Uh, when we pass a continuing resolution, what we're doing is putting in place Speaker Pelosi's policies and, 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 and President Obama's policies, as opposed to having the imprint of a Republican House on those policies. If we're able to get this appropriations process moving, that's a huge, huge benefit. Charles. Are you going to get a majority of Republicans and meet the Hastert rule? And are you going to get enough Republicans and Democrats to get it to pass the House? I think so to both. Uh, uh, this was just unveiled uh, last evening, uh, and, and you know we're working as Washington does so often works right up to the bitter end until until we come to a conclusion. Uh, and so people are still working through it. We're, it. It's an education process for our conference as well, and for our uh, members on the other side. But I think we'll have a majority of Republicans, and I think we'll be able to pass it in both the House and the Senate. Maybe. Um Congressman, uh, obviously uh, there's a big divide in the conference. This is another chapter in the story of the Republican divide. Um, what has changed since the government shut down? We heard all these conservative voices in and out of the Congress in the last 24 hours slapping down Congressman Ryan's efforts as a sellout. Um, and and obviously this was a huge event, this turning point yeah. with, the, with the government shutdown where people regretted it. What's changed um, well, in the minds of the membership? Let me address this, the, the sellout first because mm -hmm. this it just isn't true. In the past, people have seen discretionary numbers, the, the, the smaller portion of, of, of uh, the appropriations process be dealt with, and, and then the next year or two years later, those are reversed. What, what's different here is that this is a change in mandatory spending. It mm -hmm. would take a, an act of Congress. Congress, another law to go back to where we are right now. So th th this is this is different than what we've done in the past, and and, and uh, so I think it's important for people to appreciate that. Um, uh, what happened with with uh, uh, with the uh, the shutdown? I, I think that it took people's eye off the ball. Uh, the fact is that the president and and, and uh, Obamacare has been a disaster for the country, um, and and what we want to make certain we do is make certain that we keep our eye on the things that are most important to the American people. That's the economy and jobs and to do what we can to roll back Obamacare. But is governing, as you said today in your statement, small positive yeah. steps? If governing is taking a quarter of a loaf for half, um, is that still a problem for a number of people in your in your conference after the shutdown? Well, even it, if they said they regretted it, 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 it it's a process. Uh, look, incrementalism. The left is used for decades to get their policies mm -hmm. put in place. Uh, I think conservative incrementalism is what needs to be adopted, and this is a small step in the right direction. Speaker Boehner today pushed back pretty hard on these conservative groups that have been saying that this is a horrible deal, and said it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm sure that he may have said something a little bit stronger behind the scenes. Well, I, I, think, what saddens, I think what saddens me most is that... You just that, keep... <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm going to address that. I okay. think what saddens me most is that those groups came out, the vast majority of them, before the agreement was even announced, the specifics of the agreement were even announced. So they had their, their, their pens ready to go. And at the bottom, many of them, they had the Donate Now uh, insignia on, 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 their, on the, the thing that they sent out. So, I, I, look, I don't want to question anybody's motive, but the fact of the matter is this is a different kind of, of agreement. It's not a grand agreement. It's not, a, it's not the grand bargain. But it is a mild step in the right direction. What do you say to people who are sitting out in, in the country and, and saying, you know, Congress finally actually had some spending restraint, and now Republicans are choosing to abandon that spending restraint? We're not abandoning that spending restraint. In fact, we're getting more savings, again, in mandatory savings. This isn't the old deal. But you're moving, of, beyond, of this, but you're moving beyond the sequester. I mean, you're saying for two years of the sequester, this is off, or we're reinstating, we're restoring some of this spending. For 18 months, and, and there are a lot of reasons why we're doing that, the most important of which is national defense. Uh, the individuals in the, in, the, in the national security community are telling us that, that at the current levels and the current processes, they believe that we are hollowing out, their words, not mine, hollowing out 
our national security. Uh, that, that's not a responsible thing to do. Uh, the folks on the left wouldn't allow us to, to get to appropriate spending levels in, in the defense arena, national security arena, without increasing dollar for dollar uh, on the non-defense discretionary spending. How much spending. of the restored spending is going to defense? Equal amounts. One, one dollar for, for uh, uh, defense and one for non-defense discretionary. Congressman Price, thank you for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it.